How's it going, everybody? It's going great, man. Thanks. We are back here at the Pace Studio in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we're really, really lucky and happy to be joined by Joshua Davis. Uh, thank you so much for coming, and you're going to play some songs from your new record coming out. Yeah, sure enough. I'll play um, songs from The Way Back Home. Yeah, that record is called The Way Back Home. comes out October 13th. Um, I just want to say uh, Josh is joined today by Mike Shimon on percussion and Mike Lynch on keyboard. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, tell me about the first song you're going to do for yeah, us. Yeah, thanks today. again for having us, Matt. Um, I uh, it, the, the way back home was a was a, a labor of love. It was a while in the making, and um, the first tune we're going to play is the first tune on the record, and it's a song called "Just Getting By." And um, you know, the the, the storyline of the album is kind of the um, me uh, where I am now, kind of looking back on my life and and um, seeing how I've I've made a lot of mistakes, learning from my mistakes, and and this song is kind of an overview. It's almost like a table of contents for the for the whole album, and. Um, yeah, we were we were lucky enough to to uh, have uh, Steve Berlin from Los Lobos produce the record, and um, it was uh, wonderful to work with him. And uh, yeah, we're excited about being here at Pace, so we'll play the tune. Cool, man. There were days I swear there were when the colors were a little brighter. Dodging cars on handlebars and my heart couldn't have been lighter And as the sun settled down Four long nights of rest Street lights came on And I tried to do my best To get on home To get on home To get on home Before my mother called my name and I cruise around my old hometown Trying to force a smile All the neighborhood kids are trying to make it on the skids Or they've been gone for a long while Empty factories Empty streets and empty sky Truth is We're doing our best Just getting by Just getting by Just getting by Well there's something that we've lost along the way Getting by Something that we're losing every day She had my heart right from the start We drank and carried on We sang in red in a broken bed and Stayed up until the dawn She sent me with a song Each night out on the road She was stuck there in my head Get him back. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's a gorgeous song. Thanks so much. Uh, and that is sort of the, as you said, it's like almost the introduction to to the new record. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you about that record. The yeah. last one that you did from a few years ago was called The Miracle of Birds, mm-hmm. and that one was based on a very specific experience you had. Yeah. Uh, in the Middle East, you had uh, visited the West Bank and wrote about what you saw and felt there. Yeah. Um, so this one now, a few years later, is called The Way Back Home, and it seems like maybe then a natural sort of extension because you were there and then you yeah yeah i guess i haven't haven't thought of it that way but that's that's a very kind of broad stroke look at it that's good yeah we're all about the broad strokes here we're the broad (laughs) the broadest strokes is what we paint with yeah right um but that was what i was i'm curious about like this that was that was about a very specific it was experience that was was outside of your usual experience Yeah, yeah this seems like something that is almost the polar opposite of that that's exactly right and i think that um yeah, that album was, was based on my travels with this incredible nonprofit organization called On the Ground that does work with fair trade farming communities all over the world. And um, the album is really uh, about my personal experience as a Jewish man in the Palestinian West Bank and um, kind of the, the, the emotional conflicts that I felt and, and, uh, and, you know, making a lot of friends there that I otherwise would never have made. And, and um, uh, so, and it is, it was, the trip was just a couple weeks and I wrote the whole album based on that experience and, and you know, reacting to that experience. And so it was really focused and it was about one specific thing. This album, um, in a lot of ways kind of created itself and it's an album that is about, um, these, these kind of, you know, as songwriters and as, as artists, we, we tend to focus on these extreme highs and lows uh, because I, I think in a lot of ways they're they're comfortable to write about. They give us a lot of a, a lot of juicy stuff to to write about. Um, but for me, uh, y- you know, most of our lives, ninety nine percent of our lives, are are these these very subtle kind of in betweens. And um, I think there's so much magic in those in between moments. And um, I think that you know, as I grow older, I, I'm learning to appreciate. Um, the beauty of of these subtle moments, the beauty of of um, you know uh, balance and and a little bit of peace and and um, and so that's kind of what the album is about is, is appreciating those things and it's looking back on a time in my life when when I was more conflicted and and had a lot going on and had all these you know um, more of that you know emotional high and low um, and and kind of seeing where I've come from there and 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 how to appreciate these. This this balance that I've found in my life is, is it is it difficult to pinpoint those kinds of I mean when you're when you're writing about something so specific like on the last record mm-hmm. it might be easier to kind of cherry pick the particular observations or yeah. experiences is it harder to look back over all these years and sort of distill these kinds of things into very you know into singular yeah. songs one yeah. after the other it is so hard I, I think this was a really difficult record for me to write um, way more difficult than well I say different than the other one the other one was was kind of um, was harder emotionally, I think, yeah. uh, because I was dealing with a lot of. But you're taking it from a, stuff. such a specific experience, where yeah. it just seems like exactly. years worth of general life experience. Right. And how do you find that's the thing the and details how, to put these things in? Right, and and I think more even more so, how do you how do you find, you know, how do you, how do you how do you make interesting those subtle moments? Yeah. And, and I think that that's that's because we all share those those moments that are they're kind of right right there in the middle and. Um, and you know how do you how do you make those interesting? How do you make them relatable? How do you make them resonate with people? And and that's the challenge I think that I faced on this album. And it was scary in a lot of ways because uh, I think when I'm writing about, for instance, a, a Jewish guy in the West Bank, how many albums have been written about that? When I'm writing about love and yeah. kids and life, it's like everything here yeah, is about right, that. Right. You know, so it's like how do you how do you get your unique voice out there? You got to write it as the experience of a Jewish man in Michigan. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I mean, I'm, there are at least like eleven or twelve. I'm sure. There's, there's, there. Yep. There, there's quite a few of us. Yeah. Here, okay. There's quite a few of us. We're spoiled here in New York City. You are. You are. We got Detroit Metro, and and we're we're rocking a Detroit Metro. There's a <laughs> there's a nice community there. So uh, tell me about the next song you're gonna do from. Yeah, the record. you know, I'm talking about uh, talking about appreciating those moments. This is a song um, called "Always Going to Be Here" that um, that uh, I wrote. Um, Kind of for my kids is is the way it came out, um, and it's a song. Uh, you know, it's a, it's just. I mean, it's just what it says. It's a song about being there. It's it's um, it's not a. It's it's not one of my more um, you know poetic numbers. It's pretty straight and to the point. And uh, yeah, um, I love the way it came out on the record. Um, uh, and. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, was, it, was, it was great. Um, you know, we all we all play a bunch of different stuff, and, and uh, so uh, yeah, the way it came out of the record is really nice. And, and uh, we've been touring with this trio a little bit, which has been really fun too. And so to have the difference between the full band album, the you know six five six piece band album album band, and then have this touring outfit for you know. Uh, you know, out of, out of state tours has been really cool to find the the those flavors in the in the songs, different flavors in the songs. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, always gonna be here. I got dirt under my nails and a tag silk coat. Maybe a little ragged, but I'm ready to go. Just give me a call, and I'll be on the next train through. Take your time, I'm always gonna be here for you My love is like the sun, my love is like the moon My love will stick with you like a Beach Boys tune You can wear out the record, but the melody rings true Don't worry baby, I'm always gonna be here for you I'm gonna be here for you Oh, steady as the rain's happening Out of rhythm on your window pane Oh open and I'm always gonna be here for you Scarf my shoe You can fly free No, I'm always gonna be here for you I'm gonna be here for you Oh, steady as the rain Tapping on a rhythm on your window pane Oh, all I got is time There's nothing you can do to make me change Thank you guys thank you um <laughs> so it's uh, these are beautiful songs Thanks. and uh Sounds you know i'm thinking of uh i know you you are you are a, a tried and true michigan musician you still live there I born do. and raised still live there yep um and so you know i was thinking about uh the tradition that you know you sort of grew up in around that area and i think mostly of soul mm-hmm. and garage rock sure. um were there a lot of folks in this kind of vein that you looked up to as a kid growing up in Michigan? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I listened to um, a lot of different music growing up. I, um, my mom was a poet, and, um, and then uh, we had uh, this, she, we also had, you know, this incredible vinyl collection in the basement. It was like, f- f- you know, wall to wall, floor to ceiling. It looked like this, except with records. And, and, um, and so every day after school, I'd, I'd go down to the basement and I'd pick, pick off records. And um, they were, you know, um, anywhere from like Art Ensemble of Chicago to, uh, to Willie Dixon, you know, to uh, to um, Frank Zappa, to uh, you know Edgar Versace, like the, you know, it was like all over the board. Um, and uh, so I just got that, you know, that was like sc- school to me. I came back and I would pull them off the shelves, and and um, I got really interested in Mississippi John Hurt. Um, yep. That was the record that I pulled off the shelf. I put it on. I was like really drawn to immediately, and so I started listening to. Um, you know, a lot of those those people, uh, John Hurd and and um, 
and Blind Blake and, and um, uh, Blind Boy Fuller and all the blind guys. Yeah, and, all the Mississippi guys. Uh, all the Mississippi all the guys, guys, all the blind guys. Right, we, you yeah. know, we got them all. All the um, sleepy guys. All the sleepy guys, too. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> uh, and uh, and um, But we also had I, – I also uh, – my dad lived in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, still does. And um, so I'd spent all my summers up there. And there was a music festival called Hiawatha, and it still is, up there. And um, I, we used to go to it every summer. And so – that that I you know that feeling of um, music being about community um, was really strong at that festival. It was it was about you know the people that were there. There wasn't any kind of like uh, you know um, holier than thou bullshit. It was it was very like um, it was very you know community based, collaborative. And uh, so I got to you know I got to see Dave Van Ronk and John Hartford and Spider John Corner and. Um, and uh, you know all these folks, uh, Greg Brown and John Gorka, and, and these folks uh, that played there that that would you know when I first started playing guitar that would would stop and and talk to me for a little bit. You know yeah. they weren't just like going back to their hotel rooms and their hot tubs or whatever. They they were you know talking to me. And um, I think that's that's what did it is 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 those connections and seeing that that these were actually actual people. You know it's like you see the the bands on television or whatever MTV. I was watching MTV and it's like I'm never ever gonna meet Mud Honey. It's just not going to happen. Like, you yeah. know, I, I you might have met like, I mean, you came up in the early 2000s, you know, just as like the White Stripes were starting and Detroit yeah. had a huge explosion right yeah. around then. Was there ever for you any moment where you're like, I'm going to just like make the loudest, rudest rock music? Was that was that, you know, something that people were just sort of doing in Detroit I at that was, time and you had to resist? I was <laughs> I played in rock bands. I played in punk bands. I played, you know, when I was when I was in high school, I did all that stuff. Um, and uh, and then. You know, I played I played in a Motown review band, um, and I still you know I, we still play rock and roll, um, uh, but it's a little different. It is rooted in this folk stuff because that's my first love. That's what I you know that's what I've always kind of grown up loving. And and in the in in '98 I met uh, um, the guys that would form the band Steppin' in it, which right, was yeah, my your first, your first band. First, yeah, well, maybe first, not first band, but no, your, my the first, band that people knew you. F- yeah, exactly, from for a exactly. While. And that was a that was a touring you know folk outfit, and we all kind of hit it off. Um, you know, loving the same, you know, loving all that, all that, you know, uh, this, all of, all across the board, though, old country music, you know, Cajun stuff, a lot of stuff from New Orleans, um, bluegrass, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, Delta Blues, um, and, and so, and also old, you know, uh, novelty swing band stuff, you know, uh, pop music from the 40s and, and 30s, and so all that kind of got mixed up in what I do, too, you know, um, playing with that band for so long, uh, kind of, I think, you know, ingrained me with, with, with that in my songs. And so um, I think the other thing is, is that you have to have a certain amount of mystique to be a rock and roller. <laughs> and I, you know, honestly, I'm just a guy, you know, I, I, like I like to play songs and um, I've, I've, you know, I, I think that there's a part of, there's a part of me that has a little bit of that, but um, I've never felt, uh, I've never felt like I can hold up that end of the bargain. I think, yeah. you know, well, right now, I think you're going to reach back to one of those influences, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Great se- great segue for us here. Um, the third song you're going to do is a cover, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, I have an incredible love of Tom Waits, as, as uh, everybody should. Um, uh, as a songwriter, as a, as a you know, uh, instrumentalist, as a producer. I mean, um, and uh, so we're going to play a, a, a Waits tune to, to, to send you out. And... Um, uh, this is a tune called "Come On Up to the House" that uh, that I think I've been playing a lot recently because um, I think it, it it's kind of in line with what I'm trying to do with this record. It's it's you know it's about community, it's about coming home, it's about um, it's about uh, strength in numbers. I think uh, so. Cool. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house Oh, your crying won't 
forces that are inside you You got to come on up to the house Guys, thank you. That was great. Um, so was that was that a record that was on your parents' shelf back in the back in the day? No, that was a record that that I that was my that was just mine. Yeah, yeah. Tom Waits was just mine. I I, I first um, I bought uh, I bought Swordfish Trombones on a whim uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, and it freaked me out like yeah. nothing else has. And I put it on the shelf, and I put it away. And I listened to it for two years, and then um, then I got the Heart of Saturday Night. And it's just a lot more loungy early, right. you know, and, and I started, I loved that record. And then I was like, you know, I think I have another Tom Waits record around here somewhere. I pulled out the shelf and I put it on. I was like, oh my God, what did, <laughs> what was I thinking before? You know, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and then it's just been like. And now it'll be on the shelf for your kids for when they, uh, exactly. when they discover When it. they have those that, experiences. You know, honestly, I think that's like the, the biggest downside to like the whole streaming revolution to me is like, there won't, like, what will the children of music loving parents do let's like, think about the babies you know let's i mean seriously the like you have to have them on the shelf so the kid can exactly. go see no, them and touch that's them the thing. and put them on that's right? the thing it's it's got to be a tactile thing um and for me that's what it was and we've got a big record collection at home you know um but my kids both you know even my i have a two and a half year old and we got him actually it's my like little like not little it's my first generation ipod it's like you know this huge piece of equipment and he'll sit in his room and listen to Beatles all day long. Like, that's all he wants to do, you know? Um, so he can do it. But it is, it is better to, to, you know, reach on the shelf and pull it down and have it. And so I think um, it's good to see the vinyl resurgence happening, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, especially since I think compact discs shouldn't be, you know, they're, you know, people aren't going to be listening to those things anymore. But I think vinyl, because it is something that you have to be involved in, it's an active listening. You know, you got to put it on the, when, the, when the, that side is done, you got to flip, flip it. it. You know, over. it's in your yeah. hands. You can feel the, it, you can smell it. You know, it's great. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Well, that was an aside. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for uh, for coming and playing uh, songs from the Way Back Home yes. and the Tom Waits cover. Uh, the record comes out October thirteenth. It does. Uh, you are on tour. I think you got a show coming up tonight, right? We in do New, in New York City. In New York City, 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 City Winery. City Winery tonight. It's one of our favorite places to play, um, and uh, we're really excited to really excited to be here. And this is the second stop on the East Coast tour, so we're heading 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 east from here, and it's. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun. But tonight we love the city winery, so yeah, yeah cool. Uh, well, everyone can go on to uh, joshuadavismusic.com, dot find, find the dates, go see Josh, uh, pick up the record, and uh, guys, thank you so much for coming and playing for us here in our our little library. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, yeah, come back anytime and All play right. again. Cheers. All right, thanks.